I'm your host, Locum23, and joining me for a witness, a bodyguard romance, chapter 7, Confinement. Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> for a moment, the only thing you can do is stare at the, your co-worker from Boston in shock. Nami? I, uh, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be in Boston? Uh, it's the weekend. I go wherever the hotties are. She looks around the beach with a smirk. And clearly I picked the right place. Meet a woman. Great find. Uh, yeah, that's, that's why I like hanging out here. I love your hair, by the way. I barely recognized you at first. I still can't believe you finally took a vacation, and right after getting your promotion. Well, I did, so... As you move forward to guide Harika on her way, she notices a sticker on your bathing suit. Is that a name tag? Nami, are you working here? Uh, no, no. You ran a look over to where Cassian is talking to another customer and see that his back is turned towards you. Why are you on vacation alone selling weird hippie rafts? Is everything okay? If I don't convince Harika of my story, I'm screwed. An idea starts to form as you glance at Cassian again. Of Cassian be on vacation with you. Actually, I'm not alone. Waving a hand, you call out to Cassian to get his attention. Cassian, come over here and let me introduce you to Harika. A flash of panic fills Cassian's eyes as he turns to you, but his smile is effortlessly dazzling. Harika, charmed to meet you. How do you two know each other? Harika's jaw drops the moment she hears the smoky subtlety of Cassian's accent. We work together, but more importantly, I was the one who pointed you out to Nami at the bar that night. And just listening to that sexy accent of yours makes me think I did even better than I thought. Grab an arm around Cassian's waist, playing the part of a dawning girlfriend. That's right, babe. We have Harika to thank for introducing us. My sincerest gratitude, then. I never thought I'd be whisked away on a romantic getaway by such a gorgeous woman. Rika's eyes line up at the sight of Cassian kissing your cheek. You try not to let the lingering heat of his lips distract you. Oh, who knew my matchmaking skills could produce such an adorable couple? You can read Rika of your cover. Yes, you truly have a gift for that sort of thing. But it's still pretty new, so maybe you can keep it to yourself for now. I totally get it. You want to stay in your own little bottle bubble for now? Uh, speaking of that, I hope you don't mind, but I've got a whole day planned for Nami, and uh, we've got to get back to it. Of course. I'll catch up with Nami when she's back in the office. I'll spare no details. As Rigo walks away, you let out a deep breath. Do you think my cover's intact? Most likely. But you should stay low for a few days to be sure. Giving your arm a comforting squeeze, Cassian leads you away from the beach through the long grass away from the crowds milling about on the hot sand. The next several days are spent inside the confines of the house, where you quickly run out of things to do and patience. Angrily throwing a magazine onto the ground, you jump up off the bench in a huff. That's it. No more sitting around. I'm going for a walk. P please keep six feet away from anyone else, thanks. As he has over a dozen times in the past 48 hours, Cassian intercepts you. Nami, you know you can. Not until we know where it's safe. <sighs> if you want to control me, just tie me up already. Why don't you satisfy your domineering nature out of uh, by having me submit to your desire for an hour or two? Cassian lets out a strangled breath, trying not to let his eyes wander into your body. You saying those sort of sorts of things is not making the situation any easier. Pulling himself away from you, he heads over to a large cabin in the corner where he removes a heavy tool belt. It, it'll probably help your cover if I spend some time making mine believable. I didn't realize you actually have the skills it requires to be a contractor. The secret is a good cut to a good cover is a bit of truth, and there's plenty of work to do around here. He wraps the belt around his hips, letting it rest there slightly crooked. There's gotta be a hobby around here for you. What about Sudoku? I saw a few books on the shelf. 
Touch your arms and plop back down on the bench with a grumble. I already finished them. Give her Animal Crossing, for the love of God, she will leave you alone for a week. As Cassian reaches up to tighten one of the bolts on the window, you take a longing look at his halves, straining against the thick strap of the belt. Adore how it hangs. Mm, is this how women look at guys? Mm hmm. I don't hate the view. Sighing, Cassian throws you an amused look over his shoulder. None of that. Find something else to do. It can't be me. Fine. I'll learn to meditate or something. Before you close your eyes, you notice Cassian's taut biceps as he twists his screwdriver. The ache in your abdomen grows at the side of his shirt, rising to reveal a strip of his bare skin as he bends over to tighten the lower bolt. This is the worst form of torture. Maybe if I can get him talking, it uh, would make this a little more fun. Plus, I'll get to admire his body while he works. Hey, second diamond choice in six minutes. Ask Askian how he learned contracting skills. So, how'd you get so good with your hands? Laughing, Cassian shakes his head at you. If this is another attempt to seduce me... It's not, I promise. I really want to know. As he talks, he continues working, his movements swift and sure. His stone body seems to strain against his clothes with each movement. My mother. Ma wanted all her kids to know how to take care of their home. Sometimes I'd uh, have competitions with my brothers and sisters to see who made the best repairs. You distracted yourself by learning about his past. Did you win often? Not in speed. Endurance was the real trick, making things last as long as possible. He places the handle on the tool in his mouth for a moment as he grabs another nut. God damn it. You watch the round shape his lips make as he pulls the long hilt of the screwdriver slowly out. Now who's using innuendos? Holding up his hands in surrender, Cassian turns you with a smile, the weight of his tool belt lowering the fabric of his bottom slightly. Completely subconscious, I swear. Propping up one leg for a better angle, Cassian stretches even higher, letting everything go up with him. Your eyes linger on every curve, muscle, and inch of his perfect body. The sight of him is enough to make your mouth water. For some reason, I don't believe you. The familiar finger feeling of hunger surges up inside you again, and you know you can't handle the pull of desire for much longer. I can't take this anymore. I'm going upstairs to change that I'm getting out of this house. You launch to your feet, be lining for the staircase, but before you're on the first step, Gavin has thrust himself in your path. Stop and think about this for a minute first. That's all I've been doing. Attempting to move around him, you start to take another step, but Cassian blocks you with his body. I'm not letting you pass until we've talked this out. You start to dodge left, watch as he moves to intercept you. Mm, let me catch it. Let him catch me in his arms. Pretending to try to escape, you press forward until your chest is flush against Cassian's. It looks like I'm trapped. The way he presses his arms on either side of the staircase gives you an impression that he's fighting the urge to touch you. It seems I'm the one who fell for the trap. His body hardens against yours, tensing as he exhales slowly and forces himself to step away. Hmm, since you won, I guess I have to stay right here. You plop yourself down on the top step, looking down at Cassian expectantly. Now what? A few of those steps need to be f need fixing. I can show you how to make them not creep, but it's uh, sweaty work and the shirt is thick. Of course it is. Watch Cassian work shirtlessly. Nine minutes. Three choices. Let's get you out of that shirt so you don't ruin it. In one quick motion, Cassian whips his office top, flinging it down the staircase. He stretches out his arms, rotating his torso slightly. The action causes his muscles and his stomach to ripple. Much more mobility this way, too. Hmm, clearly. What do you need me to do? Come and stand here for me. He holds his arm out to steady you as you move to the step beside him. His fingers brush against the small of your back as he guides your hips so you're standing center on the stair. Is this good? Perfect. Now don't move until I tell you. Bending on his knees below you, Cassian pulls out two long slender nails and a hammer. 
Then he begins pounding the nails into the steps at the opposite angles. The way his strong hand handles the tools makes you bite down on your bottom limb. Hmm, how's it looking? He brings down the hammer one last time before standing up, his eyes traveling up your legs as he does. Beautiful. That should do it. Pulling out a hand, he helps you off the step. Looking down, you watch as Cassian presses his strong leg down on the step, bouncing his foot. Squeak's gone. Your eyes drift to where the belt is hanging low on his hips, and where his hand is gripping his large hammer firmly. I'll admit it, you know what you're doing. I didn't put on this tool belt just to impress you. Hmm, but it's part of the reason. Maybe. Allowing your mind to wander for a moment, you imagine what it'd be like to bend down level with his tool belt, your mouth inches from his zipper. God, he looks so sexy. I want to rip off his jeans right now to fulfill this fantasy. Is this how you women really think? I'm just curious. Slide down his pants. <laughs> or keep it in a dream only. Jeez. <clears throat> I'm going to show you just how good I think you look in that tool belt. Nami, these days of being cooped up together have me wild for you. I got no strength left to hide it. Hmm, I know exactly how you feel. Pressing your hand against Cassian's bare stomach, you trail your fingertips over the curves of his hard abs. As you draw playful circles over his smooth stomach, he sucks in a ragged breath. That feels incredible. Hmm, I'm just getting started. Taking hold of his tool belt, you use it to tug his body to yours, pressing your mouth to his in a searing case. With deliberate movements, you unbutton his bottoms, sliding them down his muscular thighs until they're looped around his ankles, securing his legs. Tell me what you want me to do. Just relax and let me take control. Folding down the band of his underwear, inch by inch, you kneel onto the hard wood of the steps. Positioning yourself so your eye level are level with his hip bones. You hot sal saliva fills your mouth as you slide your tongue along the sensitive skin of his inner thigh, letting him feel each reach as you travel higher. Christ. Letting your lips, you let out a long, hot breath, allowing it to cover the entire surface of him. Your kiss is slow at first, then hungry as you devour him, gripping the tool belt to keep him steady, digging your fingerna fingernails into the thick leather. You fulfilled your fantasy with Cassian. Cassian's hands tangle in your hair as he moans, pressing himself even more firmly against you. Batting one of the tools lightly so it smacks against his backside, you reach your hands around to give him a squeeze. Arr. You slap the belt against him again, and he lets out a low, guttural noise that causes a shudder of pleasure to flood your body from head to toe. Careful drawing you off your knees to his lips, Cassian gives you a probing, passionate kiss. Tear off your clothes. Tell him to ravish you. Oh my god. <laughs> Taking off your clothes, you let them fall to the floor. You stand before Cassie and fully nude, allowing him to admire you. Take me right here. This second. That's the sexiest damn thing I've ever heard. Mm. Fire burning in his eyes, he backs you into the wall, placing his arms on either side of you. The confined space of the staircase makes you feel even closer to him as you fling the remains of what he's wearing to the side and take hold of his waist. I need you. Moaning, Cassian removes the last inch of space between you, pressing the you flush against the wall. Your nails dig into his back as he guides himself deeper, lifting you higher, your hips resting in the crook of his. I want to feel all of you. Yes, please, more. Clinging to him, you rotate your hips, slapping your backside repeatedly against the wall, loving the way it heightens each nerve. Cassian moves faster and faster, raising you up to encompass him more fully, allowing the pounding sound of your body's meaning to penetrate your cries of ecstasy. Oh, Nami. Mind-numbing pleasure crests you over in waves, building uh, you up, then flooding out of you, as powerful starlight erasing the rest of the universe until the only thing you know is the way Cassian makes you feel. As the sun rises the following morning, you tug yourself out of bed and get dressed. You grab the old phone book by the bed and dust off the landline. I'm not letting another day pass by without finding something to do for myself on this island. 
Cassian appears in your doorway, knocking his knuckles against the door frame. It's surprising to see you functioning this early without coffee. I'll make you a cup if you like. Thank you. I'll need it if I'm going to secure myself a new job before the day is over. I thought we agreed. I'm not spending a second more locked in this house, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. God, why do I feel like this is a innuendo for what's going on in the world right now? Cassian looks at you with a smoldering intensity, a mixture of raging desire and frustration. Don't be so sure about that. The book was literally 15 minutes long. And that was with me kind of like nonchalantly making jokes or things like that. Jesus Christ, Pixelberry. This is smut. It's literally smut. And you know what's worse? I'm just going to say this before we end. I have wrote better. I literally used to be a writer who had a fan base larger than Pixelberries at one time. No, I'm not giving you my name that I formerly went by. That's a secret. No one knows what I look like. No one knows the sound of my voice. It was what I wrote. And let me just say this. Pixelberry! You are shit at this. I'm just saying. It's 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 not... You, 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 I swear to God, like there, there are novels on bookshelves that are better than this. On the discount row. Like, this is just crap. It's literal crap. You're not connecting with the audience. You're not connecting with, you know, the reader. You're not connecting with anything. This is just garbage. And then you put open heart on hiatus for the next month because, quote-unquote, we're thinking about the health of our staff. Are you joking right now? Especially when everything's going downhill in terms of numbers and the whole nine yards and, and the fact that everything's coming out of lockdown. What bullshit is this? That's all I'm going to say. Without further ado, I hopefully have entertained you all more so than Pixelberry has done. If so, please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you're not already, but make sure to like and share the video. And, uh, I don't know, let me know in the comments section below. Are you okay with the book? Do you think it's shit? Most likely, by now, especially reading your comments, you have said it's shit. Don't worry, I entirely agree with you. After there was four diamond choices in the span of nine or so minutes, all for garbage. It's literal garbage. Like, it disgusts me how many games right now are more deserving on this channel, let alone games deserving that I could be spending my time on, than this crap. I would rather play Detroit Becomes Human every single day versus this garbage. Like, I just, I don't know what to tell you. Between two souls. Like, there's so many good games out there that are actual choices-based. This is shit. If I wanted to read this, I would at least read chapters, which is significantly better in its in its writing of things like this. Like, for the love of whatever the hell you hold holy or unholy. Mmm! Goodbye!